What's up? This is Ray. Welcome back. Hey, this is like my fifth take trying to do this intro. <laughs> hey, today we're going to be checking out the biggest set I've ever reviewed on the channel. What you're looking at is a lighting kit, a studio lighting kit from a company called ESDI. E -S -D -D -I. Uh, I've reviewed a product photography light tent for them in the past and they uh, really appreciated that and they asked me what I like to review this studio set. Uh, so they were kind enough to send it out. I want to thank Morgan for that. Uh, the significance of this set is if you're just starting out in photography and you see how much all the gear costs, it can get overwhelming, right? So the point of this kit is you can get everything, two soft boxes, two umbrellas, this backdrop, and keep in mind the backdrop, this is the smallest it'll, it'll go. There's two more extensions that'll make it a lot longer and you can raise it really tall also. This entire set is less than $150 and really you're never going to use all four lights at the same time anyway so it's kind of really overkill but it's good uh, because it's versatile so if you're curious about uh, an affordable but capable studio lighting kit stick around we're going to be checking out the SD studio lighting set stay tuned <laughs> all right so here goes the first thing i want to show you is uh, how to set up the soft box and they're rectangular soft boxes so the way it is is you see this ring right here you push the ring down over the light fixture and it's already set open. Um, the kit comes with four of these light stands and they all have this pin on top. So all the fixtures just fit right on top like this and you tighten it in place. So all the stands are really identical. Next thing I want to show you is the bulb. <laughs> the bulb comes in this nice um, bubble case and you really want to use it. Look how big this bulb is. It's a lot bigger than a standard bulb um, and it is daylight balance so that means uh, you're gonna get accurate white balance on your camera if you set it to daylight and I like to actually manually tweak it too but put the put the bulb in place you actually want to tighten the bulb from the base you don't want to hold the fluorescent tube. Okay bulb in place alright so next thing is the diffuser very important it softens the light and there are uh, four velcro on it in the middle of each section just put it in place and it comes with a light switch it's pretty much the setup of the softbox so next up is the umbrella same thing light stand the umbrella holder is a little different okay so this is the umbrella nice and cute I got to keep this from my daughter <laughs> So there's an opening right here in the front and that's where we're going to put this rod. And there's a tightening knob here. Put it as far as you want. The closer the light, the less um, diffusion you get. The further it away, the more diffusion you get. And of course you put the bulb here. One thing I notice about the umbrella is it doesn't emit as much light in the front. It, it kind of spreads light everywhere. And, that, and there's some applications that's exactly what you want. But because the soft boxes have that reflector in the back, it directs everything forward. So it's up to you to decide which one is better for which situation. And I think it's a good idea that they put it in there for beginners. That way they can experiment and um, learn how to use light to their advantage. All right, next thing we're going to look at that comes with this kit is this reflector. <laughs> um, this is a bicolor reflector. What that means, it has two colors, obviously. It has this gold warm tone on one side. The other side, it has this uh, silver reflector. All right, yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So tell us about the reflector. Like, it reflects off, for example, if you were outside and the sun was shining, there would be shade on this side. So then you would hold this to the side. So when the sun comes, it can reflect off to the side, to, to your cheek. Or you can put it under your chin, and when you take the picture, they won't notice it's there. And it will reflect under the chin. There's a lot of Sports Illustrated photos and stuff like that. You don't even realize there's a reflector right off frame. So uh, let's see if I can close it. There's a technique to doing it. All right. 
took me like five tries to get the hang of that, but uh, that's the reflector. Okay, so the next thing I want to experiment with, I want to see how high and how wide this uh, backdrop frame will get. I have the extra um, extensions here, and uh, I'm curious uh, whether these backdrops will reach the entire distance. Let's, let's see what happens. Wow, that is, that's wider than I thought. I guess the advantage of having a backdrop this wide is you could do family photos, multiple people. Um, you could do um, product photography of large things. That is more than I thought it would reach. Um, let's see now how, how far the backdrops cover. Yeah, so look at that. This thing practically reaches the ceiling. Um, of course, the limitation is the length of the backdrop. Um, but it's a starting point. That way you could get your own other backdrops or, or longer one. But wow, I really didn't expect that. <laughs> I forgot to mention the green backdrop is, is for if you're doing special effects or green screen, you can actually project uh, another image on the back. You can make it look like you're standing at a beach or something like that. Newscasters do that a lot. Otherwise, I don't see a use to use the green one for portraits. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you some of the test images I got. And keep in mind, this is my first time using a studio lighting kit, and it's a big kind of learning curve. You usually take a shot, make adjustment, take shots, and um, it'll take you several times to get it um, how you want or as close as you want. So let's look at the first image I took. This is an image of my daughter, and uh, of course, I didn't make time to do hair and makeup and wardrobe and all that. It's just a test shot to see the quality of the light. What I really like is the key light is just like this one. It's in front of her um, at a 45 degree angle coming down. I really like how the light is soft. Um, the white balance is perfect. Um, I pretty much got it perfect first try in my opinion. Um, what you'll notice also behind her to her right is a second soft box in the distance. And some people call it a kicker light or a hair light. What it's doing is it's outlining her body and separating her from the background and it's really kind of given a 3d look and i really like how that one turned out as well what i don't like is the look of the backdrop some of it is my fault um, one thing you'll notice is if you look at the backdrop you you probably will make out the green kayak shining through um, that means the backdrop is is see-through it's not as thick as i would like it to be and um, that was a problem until my 15 year old daughter came up with an idea. She suggested putting the white backdrop up first and then the backdrop, black backdrop over it. And it really solved the problem of light shining through it. You shouldn't have to do that, but um, it was a good idea. And I'm going to show you an example of, of what that looks like right now. Yeah, so this is my 15 year old daughter, the one that came up with the idea of putting the white uh, sheet behind the black. And as you can see, it's working here. We can't see through it. But what I failed to do when I'm looking at these images, I failed to make sure that the, the backdrop was perfectly straight and level and there were no creases. As you can see, there's folds in it and it's distracting. So that's I'm showing you um, my faults and things that <laughs> I would do better next time. And uh, it's good for you to see uh, what you may have to go through so you don't have to make the same mistakes. Okay, so this image, my, my seven-year-old daughter actually took this of me. I like it. Um, it's The lighting is, is really great. Um, the, of course, she cut off the top of my head and my arm. <laughs> Bless her heart. One thing you want to keep in mind with the black backdrop is, although the light is shining on you, you don't want it to shine on the backdrop because you'll see it. The black backdrop will kind of shine and um, it'll then again, you may want that effect, but um, if you want the backdrop to stay perfectly black, you got to figure out a way to probably move your subject further away from the backdrop. But it just shows how um, getting a, a perfect studio photo is not as easy as it looks. It takes a lot of fine tuning and, and kind of a, a strategy to make it work. Next thing I want to show you that, that is even more technical is the, the white background. It's like the reverse. Uh, theory because you don't want a light shining on the black backdrop but when you have the white backdrop look at this image the background is not perfectly white um, it doesn't have enough light on it so in order for me to make this white backdrop 
perfectly white. I'll have to shine lights on it. And you want the backdrop to be brighter than the, than the light shining on you. Um, and that's what will make it even more technical. Um, especially if I'm using both of the soft boxes on me already. Um, I'll probably need another couple to shine on the backdrop. But as you can see also, I hadn't ironed. I hadn't ironed the backdrops. They're about the size of a queen bed and that'll take a lot of time. So this was just a test. Um, so yeah, you really want to prepare the backdrops um, before you, <laughs> you take the image. <laughs> All right, so that is my thorough review of the SD Studio lighting kit. And as you can see, it's very, it's very hardcore. I, I don't want to say it's overkill, but uh, there's so many parts to the kit that you, you're probably never going to use all of them at once, but that's actually a good thing because if you're starting out, it allows you to grow into it. You can use what you need and it allows you to, uh, to be creative with where and how you put the lighting. Uh, there's one thing I would say that could make SD better is the backdrop choices, the colors. When you look at Amazon lighting sets, they all have the same backdrops, black, green, and white. I want SD to do the best. I want them to reach their full potential. And it would be good if when you order this kit, if they were able to, customers were able to ch check three boxes for a different set of backdrops, colors or textures that would suit their particular circumstances. I know it's not easy doing that when you're running a Amazon store. It's logistically, it may not really be that possible, but that's just a suggestion. All right, Ada, so we just tested the lighting kit. Um, what's, what are your opinion of it, of taking pictures with it? I think we should, like, use it more often, and I think we should, like, make sure we use it a lot because taking pictures is a lot of fun. Right. And... Whose look, whose pictures are prettier, mine or yours? Mine, of oh, course. Yeah. That's what I, I knew you were going to say that. Okay. Um, well, thanks for helping. And everybody, want to thank you for checking out this review of the SD Studio Lighting Kit. Uh, if you want to get one of these kits, I'm going to put a, a link to the Amazon store below. It's about $146. Um, and they have other kits too. Uh, so, hey, thanks for watching and keep in mind, no matter what lighting kit you use for your uh, videos, pictures, B-roll, until next time, as always, keep it real. Yes. <laughs>